Welcome to lecture 12. In today's preparation lecture, we will set up and solve the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom and examine its solutions. This lecture is broken down into two pieces. The first half will focus on setting up and solving the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom, as well as discussing heavier elements. The second half will look at the solutions to determine where the quantum numbers come from, as well as the shape and properties of s, p, and d orbitals, based on the determined wave function solutions. The Schrodinger equation can be solved exactly for the hydrogen atom. The solution quantifies all the orbitals familiar to any chemist, being the s, p, d, f orbitals, and so forth. It also returns the empirically determined Rydberg equation, just like the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom did. It also serves as a template to examine other larger, more complicated atoms and molecules. For the purposes of the calculation, assume that the proton nucleus is fixed at the origin, with an electron of reduced mass mu interacting with the proton through the Coulombic potential, which is described as negative e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught times r, where e is the elementary charge and r is the distance between the proton and the electron. As was shown in a previous lecture, the Schrodinger equation can be written using the Laplacian to read negative h-bar squared over 2 times mu times the Laplacian times psi plus the potential energy times psi is equal to the energy times psi. We also saw in the previous lecture that the Laplacian can be written in any coordinates. We will use spherical coordinates again here since the wave function solutions will be spherically symmetric. Because the radius is not fixed for this problem, we cannot immediately eliminate any terms. Therefore, the Schrodinger equation reads negative h-bar squared over 2 times mu, which is times 1 over r squared d by dr, which is applied to r squared d psi by dr, plus 1 over r squared sine theta d by d theta, which is applied to sine theta d psi by d theta, and that's plus 1 over r squared sine squared theta d squared psi by d phi squared, and from that we subtract e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r times psi, which is the potential energy term, and to that we set that equal to e times psi. As is customary with any time we have solved the Schrodinger equation, we have worked to simplify it so that we are only solving a differential equation of a single variable when we start with one that is of multivariables. And in this case, we have a multivariable differential equation since in our Schrodinger equation we have derivatives with respect to r, theta, and phi, and psi is a function of r, theta, and phi. So let's employ the same strategy here and let's create a differential equation of a single variable. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to rearrange this expression that I have. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply out the r squared terms out of this since I have one in each of these, and I'm going to break this term up into two different pieces, where one piece will be this d by dr term, or these terms that have to do with difference with respect to r, and the second term is going to be all these terms with respect to theta and phi, all the angular terms. So this first term is going to be negative h-bar squared over 2 times mu r squared, since I'm going to multiply in this negative h-bar squared over 2 mu, I'm going to have d by dr, and that's applied to r squared d by d theta dr. And then I'm going to have my second term, which is going to be negative h-bar squared over 2 mu r squared, because again I'm going to distribute out the r squared term, and I've distributed in the negative h-bar squared over 2 mu, and that leaves me with 1 over sine theta d by d theta applied to sine theta d by d theta plus sine squared theta 1 over d squared by d phi squared and all I've done here is I've just multiplied out my psi to the right hand side of that term. I still have my potential energy term e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r times psi and that's still equal to e times psi. And what we're going to do with this solution, or what we're going to assume our solution for psi, we're going to let psi be equal to a function of r times a function of theta and phi. You notice here I'm using this same y that we had solved before 
from the rigid rotator problem. And so really this should read r theta phi in terms of I'd have three terms, but since I know already an angular solution which will satisfy this differential equation, then I can just group them together and write it as y. So the only thing that we need to actually solve for, the only differential equation that we're going to solve here today, is this function r, the radial component. So if I substitute in this, different, or this definition of psi into the differential equation that I just wrote down above, then I would write negative h bar squared over 2 mu r squared d by dr. That's applied to r squared d capital R capital Y by dr. From that I'm going to subtract off h bar squared over 2 mu r squared. I have 1 over sine theta d by d theta sine theta d by d theta plus 1 over sine squared theta d squared by d phi squared capital R capital Y minus the potential energy term e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r capital R capital Y is equal to e times capital R capital Y. Now I'm going to look at this first term and here what I have in this first term on the left I have these derivatives with respect to r and so my capital R term that term is a function of little r which means that these differentials in this term apply to that capital R term. However my y term is only a function of theta and phi so that means it's essentially a constant to any of these terms. What that means is that since I have r times y and I'm applying these differentials with respect to r, I can just bring through my y term all the way to the front because it's essentially a constant to those terms. And so I can write negative y h bar squared over 2 mu r squared d by dr. That's applied to r squared dr by der. I can apply a similar logic to my second term where again I've got capital R and I've got capital Y and that they're being operated on by all of these differentials that have to do with theta and phi. And now my capital R term, it is nothing to do where it is not a function of theta or phi. So none of these differentials apply to my capital R term. And so in that case, I can actually move my capital R term all the way to the front of this term and I can write negative r h bar squared over 2 mu r squared and then I have 1 over sine theta d by d theta which is applied to sine theta d by d theta plus sine squared theta 1 over sine squared theta rather d squared by d phi squared that's applied to y I'm still left with my potential energy term negative e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r capital R capital Y and that's equal to e capital R times capital Y. So now I want you to recall that all of this, all of these differential terms and these sine thetas with this negative sign and with this h bar, all of that, that is simply just the total angular momentum operator squared. And we know that when we apply L hat squared to Y, what we get returned to us is positive H bar squared L times L plus 1. And we get the wave function Y back to us. What that means in this context is that we can actually rewrite all of those differentials and all those terms. We can just write those terms to be equal to H bar squared L, L plus 1 times Y. That means our differential equation or our Schrodinger equation can be rewritten to read y times h bar squared over 2 mu r squared d by dr r squared d capital R by dr. And now since I've got minus sign, well that minus sign becomes a plus sign. So I'm going to have plus r over 2 mu r squared. So I keep all the rest of the constants in the front of this term. But now all the rest of this becomes h bar squared times L, L plus 1 times Y. And I can still subtract off E squared over 4 pi epsilon naught R, capital R capital Y is equal to E times capital R capital Y.
Well, now I have a capital Y term that's involved in each one of these four terms, and none of them are now affected by any differential or any other term that I have to worry about in terms of having my Y function having something applied to it. What that means is that then I can actually just divide through by that y function, and I can actually cross it off completely. This now achieves that goal that we were trying to, that we had set out to do previously, which was to create a differential equation solely of a single variable. And now all I have left is just this function of r, which is a function of the radius. So now I can finally write my differential equation, my Schrodinger equation, to read negative h bar squared over 2 mu r squared d by dr applied to r squared d capital R by dr. And this last term I'm going to group together all the rest of the three terms and distribute out the function r. And so I'm going to be left with plus h bar squared l, l plus 1 over 2 mu r squared minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r minus e all times r, and that's equal to 0. And again, I'm just going to reiterate that we have essentially created a differential equation of only one variable. And so that greatly simplifies this problem because now we only have to solve one differential equation. We already know the solution for y theta phi, because that came from the rigid rotator lecture. And that just means now that when we want to solve for psi, then all we need to do is take the solution from this differential equation that we found here at the bottom. And that will be one term from our psi. And then we just multiply it to the solution that we found in the previous lecture, the y term, which is a function of theta of phi. And that will then give us our total wave function solution for the hydrogen atom. The solution to this differential equation is negative square root of n minus l minus 1 factorial divided by 2n times n plus l factorial cubed. And that's times 2 over n a naught raised to the power of l plus 3 halves. That's times r raised to the power of l times e raised to the power of minus r over n a naught times l in a state 2l plus 1 and n plus l as a function of 2r over n a naught. This is just a polynomial multiplied by an exponential. This form of the solution is also normalized. The l term is from the associated Laguerre polynomials. This is a series of polynomials which are defined by n and l. Given these two constants which define a particular state, we can select the proper polynomial for that solution. Several are listed below. In the definition of the solution, L is a function of 2R over n a naught. It is not multiplied by 2R over n a naught. This can also be seen in the Laguerre polynomial solutions below, where they are expressed as functions of x, where x is equal to 2R over n a naught.